Welcome to Bali! In this chapter I'm going to show you Kopi Luwak, or the most expensive coffee in the world. It has a fascinating history and a truly unique production process. In addition to this, I'm going to show you other wonderful places so you can learn more about this island. The nature, temples and culture of Bali will leave you wanting to discover more. So make yourself comfortable, grab something to drink and keep watching. After seeing the waterfalls in my last video, we headed to a place that our guide recommended to us. On the way, we saw 10-year-old children driving scooters and we were completely shocked. Bali is well known for its lush landscapes and a favorable climate for coffee cultivation. Many coffee plantations in Bali offer guided tours for visitors which include tastings of different types of coffee, including Luwak coffee. Well guys, so right now we are in a special place here in Bali. I didn't know but coffee here is very famous and they have different kinds of coffee. We're going to try 10 of them and we're also going to try a typical coffee which is um, coffee because there is an animal that eats the coffee seeds and then when it goes out they use this material to make this kind of coffee so let's try it so this is vanilla coffee ginseng bali ginger Bali Luwak coffee, often called Luwak coffee, is a unique type of coffee that originates from Indonesia. The term Luwak refers to an animal that plays a significant role in the production of this kind of coffee. After this animal eats and ferments the coffee beans in its digestive system, the beans are roasted to create the final product. This coffee is sold at a premium price due to the labor-intensive process of collection and the limited supply. Also, coffee farming is an essential part of the local economy, providing employment and income for many families. So this is the luok animal, this is the animal that our friend was explaining and they eat the coffee seeds and then after eating they like, uh, they poop it and then they clean those seeds and they make the coffee from this. So this animal uh, likes <laughs> bananas, coffee and, and papaya and this is a male and his name is Rocky. Coffee holds a significant place in Balinese culture, often being part of traditional ceremonies and daily life. After the tour we went to a local store where you can buy small bags of coffee. There were so many flavors that it's so difficult to choose but I finally bought coconut and peanut coffee. Okay guys, so now the rain has stopped, we have four more hours with our driver and he's going to take us around here a few temples. We had a huge list but the best thing is to have advice from the locals because they know better than you. And also the truth is that we are so tired that we want to see just plain things. He told us that all the waterfalls here in Northern Bali um, need, um, like you need to walk. Keep this in mind if you come here. Our next stop was Pura Luhur Besika Lung Temple. The temple features traditional Balinese architecture characterized by intricate carvings, colorful offerings and beautiful gardens. When visiting temples in Bali, it's very important to observe local customs and dress codes, as these reflect the cultural and spiritual significance of the places. But don't worry, if you didn't know this information like us or you just forget, at the entrance of each temple, the locals will cover you with a cloth. So we came to this temple and they make you wear a skirt even if you're a man because you have to respect the Hindu traditions and now I'm going to ask my guide to explain to us what is this temple. I think he's a bit shy but I will try my best because I think he will explain better than me. 
This temple embodies the artistic expression of Balinese culture. The temple is dedicated to the worship of the sea gods and is often associated with the protection of fishermen and sailors. Its rituals aim to honor the spiritual connection between the community and the ocean. So this is an offering and here you can put uh, fruit, incense or flowers. And, and why is the cloth? But it's like a skirt? Yeah. A skirt? Yeah. What is it for? What is it for? Yeah, for the ceremony. Huh? All the building. Ah, when there is a ceremony, they, they put all the buildings with this coverage. I wanted him to speak, but he's very shy. Every moment tonight, they led me to you. After this visit, our guide took us to a nearby restaurant with views of the rice fields. I ordered tomato juice and they gave us some very delicious potato chips. Afterwards, I ate an amazing vegetarian dish with tempeh. Bali's rice fields are not only visually stunning, but also deeply intertwined with the island's culture and agriculture. Rice is a vital element in Balinese culture and religious practices. It represents prosperity and is often involved in rituals and ceremonies. Whether you're interested in photography or simply enjoying the beautiful landscapes, a visit to the rice fields is a must when traveling to Bali. in one of the six main temples here in Bali and one interesting thing is that there are a few restrictions if you want to get inside and our guide told us that this is only for this temple so you cannot enter if you're pregnant you cannot enter if you're a child and your first tooth didn't fall and also you cannot enter if you are during your period and Balinese temples are very different from other Asian temples because they are open and they are on the outside. Serene and spiritual Pura Luhur Batukaru was the temple of the Tabanan kings. This temple has a mystical air and we could also see the general absence of tourists. But if you want to discover more about Bali, don't forget to subscribe and see you in my next video. So we just arrived home, we're going to have some snacks and sleep.